one of the world's best known cars. The Germans who made it called it the Volkswagen, the people's car. The Americans nicknamed it the Beetle. Wilhelm called it the Yellow Submarine and said that it could travel on water. He didn't just say this, he proved it and drove from Douglas in the Isle of Man to St. Bees on the English mainland in a Volkswagen. This film is about a second Volkswagen with which Bill intends to drive from England to Ireland, so setting a world record that might never be beaten for an amphibious vehicle. One of these men, Bill Helm, still young-ish, plans to waterproof another people and cross the Irish Sea. How do you turn a car into a boat? Hello, Bill. Hi, are you uh, rebuilding it? Eh? No, I'm uh, trying to make it sail. Make it sail? Waterproofing it, making sure there's no rot or all. And then uh, filling it with uh, polyurethane. Oh, I see. So, what do you do? Do you make some tanks underneath there? Uh, just inside, build some tanks to hold this. No, you fill all the cavities. Oh. You can Why you do it cavities and yeah. uh, your back panels. Mm -hmm. I think. And your boot. Mm -hmm. That's full of it. How do you want for steering it? Do you just use the conventional steering? Just steer it with the front wheels. We're also, I'm bringing the uh, oil out of the engine and having that cooled with seawater. Or so an external oil like heat exchange. An oil cooler. Yeah, an external oil cooler. Mm. Oh, you're all set up. Well, I will be in another fortnight. Yeah. And we found out that the engine ran too fast for the size of the prop. So we to reduce the speed. Which gives the engine a lot more power over the propeller. And plus it, uh, it lowers the drive further into the wall. What are the two old for? That one is your air intake and that expels your hot air from your engine. Indeed, that's what it's 
it's made for. But it can also fill the spaces in a car body in order to make the machine float. When in liquid form, the foam can take any shape, and the lid to the car boot becomes a mold of sorts.
Philip got to panicking and uh, <laughs> he come on and hanging on to me, tipped it over to one side of it. So we'll try it again with pump on. It'll suck that out that effectively. Well, well you're, there with, on, you're there with that in case it doesn't. resort 
something for everyone. While mother relaxes in a deck chair and the children are playing on the beach, father, as like as not, is fishing from the promenade. What's that yellow spot just off the edge of the pier? That's a motor car, Hamish. A motor car? Yes, I think that's a Volkswagen. A Volkswagen? Off the end of the pier? I think I've been getting too much sun. I'll away back to the hotel for a wee dram. The sea tests have been successful. And in a few days' time, Bill Helm and Phil Martin will take the car to Dublin. They will then cross the Irish Sea and hope to drive the Beetle onto the beach here at Blackpool. This is the car that Bill Helms is going to risk his life in, a bright yellow Volkswagen Beetle. This Volkswagen Beetle is just one of millions that rolled off the production lines. Sadly, they don't make them anymore, but there's still plenty left. Of those that are left, many have been modified in some way, customised, personalised. Some owners have gone to real extremes. OK, Bill. The car was made in 1972. Under its bonnet beats a perfectly ordinary 1600cc engine. But in one important respect, it's anything but ordinary. Bill has designed and converted this amphibious car himself, and tomorrow he plans to drive it from Dublin, across the Irish Sea, to Blackpool, about 125 miles in what are predicted to be very choppy waters. He already claims to hold the world record after a crossing from the Isle of Man to Cumbria 13 years ago, but tomorrow's journey is going to make that look like a Sunday afternoon paddle. On land, the Beetle goes at 75 miles an hour, at sea, about eight knots. It's likely to take him about 24 hours, and throughout that time, a rescue boat will be close behind. What actually drives you to do this sort of thing? A lot of people might think it's a bit, a bit foolhardy. I have no idea. Couldn't tell you. Do you actually enjoy it? Yeah, I think it's the adrenaline. What's the best thing, making the car or doing the crossing? Both, making it and doing it. You can have a lot of fun making it, and then when you actually do it, it's still a lot of fun. Now. You've got to pity some of the poor boats that are going to be passing you during this crossing. They might be a bit confused to see a Volkswagen Beetle just driving along in the sea. Well, they usually are. They usually come back and have another look when they see us. Bill claims it can survive a Force 8 gale, and he's confident of making it back safely. But what happens if the car breaks down? Certainly not get it fixed by the AA out in the Irish Sea. <laughs> Let's see what the seafaring weather's going to be like. Even at Blase Blackpool, where anything seems possible, an amphibious motor car has some novelty value. And everyone enjoys a free show. day and among the press who are present is Neil Croft, photographer for the Lancashire Evening Post. The water beetle has caught Neil's imagination and he will go to Dublin with Bill and Phil and so become a part of the story. Nothing seems to have changed on the beach. The children are still playing in the sand. The bathers are still splashing, but the chit-chat about a motor car that floats will travel from the deck chairs on the beach to the hotels and boarding houses and cause many an argument over tea. Will Blackpool, I wonder, ever be the same again?
on the River Liffey in Dublin, the capital city of Ireland, Alan Thomas, the skipper of the merchant ship Canute, scans the scene with his binoculars looking for a boat barge. For the vessel under his command is to act as an escort to Bill Helm and Phil Martin in their attempt to cross the Irish Sea by motor car. Yeah, Roger, in addition to the skipper, the MV Canute carries as crew Peter Stoyle, Harold Wilkinson, who besides attending to general seafaring duties, also acts as cook, Danny, the skipper's son, who, during school holidays, is effectively the youngest engineer in the business. On the journey to Dublin, the ship has been tossed about like a cork. The gale is not now so severe, but although it's pleasant on the river, the sea is still far too rough for a motor car. For three whole days, Bill, with his car, and Alan, with his ship, must wait until conditions are suitable for an attempt at a crossing. The Dubliners take Bill and, and his water beetle in their stride, although it cannot be denied that the visitors from England have strange ways. They expect the South to be served as quickly as ever it appears. And it isn't often that a duck travels up the Liffey at eight knots, or a car goes under rather than over the suspension bridge. This surely is the stuff of which legends are made. Who knows whether some Celtic bard might compose a folk song to commemorate the event. Neil Cross, 
who is the photographer for the voyage, is on the deck, camera at the ready. maneuver and takes more than one attempt, but Bill and Alan are persistent. Now is the best time to refuel. We need 
speed up with the throttle and go faster. Yeah. We were actually, when we got, on, we got into the ring, mm. we were on left left than we were when we got four shy. Yeah. What about when you right up the turn? Do you have to go use left road then? Yeah, when well, we were on four shy, we were really flat. Yeah. I 
Well, we've heard that, in fact, Bill Helm, the helmsman, has had to postpone his trip to the Isle of Man rather sadly because of 20... ...to postpone his attempt on his own 61-mile record on Friday because of high waves. When he finally set off, he sailed into mechanical problems. The water pump blocked and Bill had to be towed in from halfway across the Irish Sea. Vorsprung durch Technik, I was going to say. I hope you heard that. Yep.